Welcome to the Ask Mary Magdalene Show, and this is episode two. And today we have a question, does Mary Magdalene visit me as much as Jesus visits me? And the uh, reply from Mary Magdalene is entitled, Secular Law. And she writes, my love, this ancient wisdom from the kingdom of my heart pervades beyond eternity's start. What Mary Magdalene is saying here is that this ancient w wisdom from the kingdom of her heart, uh, that what she's saying is that we should be seen with the eye of our hearts. And when we do that, uh, we allow the presence of Mary Magdalene to pervade our environment, to pervade our consciousness and our hearts. And Mar Mary Magdalene is around all of us all the time. Remember, a spirit uh, has no concept of space or time. So Mary Magdalene is around all of us all the time. And it's up to us, each one of us, to allow her to, to come into our experience in the way that is unique to us. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, when I was in college in 1968, um, I was befriended by a beautiful woman and her name was Migdalia. She was from Mexico, but that was a very uncommon name. I, for, in fact, it was the first time I had heard that name. And uh, she befriended me. We became friends. Um, we didn't have any classes together, but uh, in between classes, we would always spend time together and talk. And the last time I saw it, this was 1968, so they, uh, the Johnson administration was beginning to um, draft college students. And I wasn't about to be, you know, a grunt out on the rice paddies in Vietnam. So I decided to enlist. And uh, I didn't tell McDalia I was enlisting. And the last time I saw her, she was driving away uh, after classes going home. She carpooled with her friends and she, she was uh, in the back seat in the far right corner. And there was uh, five girl, uh, four other girlfriends in the car. Anyway, uh, she didn't see me. I had gotten some books and was walking back to class. Uh, and, but her girlfriend saw me. So her girlfriend next to her tapped her on the shoulder and Magdalia turned around completely around in her, in her seat and just smiled at me with this ear to ear smile and waved to me. And that was the last time I saw her. And, you know, in December of 2012, I started receiving these love notes for your soul from Mary Magdalene, whom I call Maggie. Um, but, you know, the ego is always going to have you doubting uh, your spiritual experiences. So uh, Maggie, Maggie began relaying these love notes to me in December 2012. And in April, I, I began really doubting these and she gave me what I call a burning bush answer. But as time went on, uh, ego started putting more, uh, more doubts into me, not as, not as uh, uh, as severe as the, as the first doubting in April, but I think it was the next year. I began having some doubts again if these love notes were really coming from her. And out of the blue, she, she said, look up Migdalia. And I hadn't thought about Migdalia in years. <laughs> I said, okay. So I looked up Migdalia and the definition of her name was flower. And I thought, yes, um, she was beautiful like a flower. Uh, but I wondered what that had 
what that had to do with anything. And, and so the next day, uh, Maggie said, look up her name again. And I said, well, I already looked it up. It means flower. She said, look it up again, use a different source. So I did. And it said Migdalia, a derivative of Magdalena. Now, why is that important? <laughs> because in the year I was in Vietnam, I was in one of the, the heaviest, the, one of the areas with the heaviest concentration of Viet Cong, our enemy. And for the entire year I was there, or the air base next to us, we get hit with mortar rounds uh, once or twice a week. And, but we never got hit. And when it was time for me to go home, uh, I had to go back to Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, and wait a few days for my paperwork to come through. And when I was there, the unit I worked in took a direct hit and three of my friends who I worked side by side with were killed. And what Maggie was telling me was Migdalia, when she turned around and smiled and waved to me, was telling me that I was going to be okay in Vietnam. Now, I didn't know it at the time, when I was starting to have doubts a couple of years ago. Um, this is how she uh, uh, assaged my doubts. So, uh, and my point being is that uh, we just have to be open and uh, our angels will uh, speak to us in ways that are best for us to experience. Could be a voice, could be somebody like Migdalia, uh, could be a movie, uh, could be a vision. Actually, uh, you can actually see your angels. Uh, well, that's a whole other topic. But uh, so the answer to uh, uh, this person's uh, question is yes. Uh, Mary Magdalene uh, comes to you uh, every day. And it's up to you, though, to be receptive to her in whichever way that she feels is best for you at that particular time for you to experience her. So it might be in physical form. Uh, might be in some other way, but uh, so the answer is yes. <laughs> okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, again, uh, please subscribe if you enjoyed this. Uh, tell your friends about this channel. And if you have a question for Mary Magdalene, please uh, submit it uh, through uh, direct message to me. I, you can email it to me at joseph at jmmlove.com or I'm on Instagram a lot, you can direct message me there. All questions remain anonymous, so your name will never be revealed. And, but uh, you know, if you have a question, I'm sure there's uh, many other people with the same question. So please, you be the brave one to submit it and uh, we'll answer it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you at episode three.